Hey everybody, welcome to What Drives Us, episode 303 for January 16th, 2019. My name is Russell Frost. I am your host for this adventure into advanced technology driving and sustainable energy and eh, who knows, maybe just some random commentary. Luckily though, you don't have to put up with me for the entire show. No, no, no. I have two good friends, expert panelists here that are going to actually make me look a lot smarter than I really am. Let's introduce them, our man in Canada, where it is not, he's not currently under a blanket of snow. But it's coming. But it's coming. Yeah, it is coming. <laughs> you Mr. can't Mark get away for the whole winter. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he has a lower third. You know his name, but I'm going to say Mr. Mark Coglin. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. We've got a good amount of news in the alt of vehicle territory tonight. And look forward to sharing some of that information with you. Absolutely, absolutely. And next to him, uh, is uh, is there any snow in the front range? Um, not right now. Today was a gorgeous day. It was almost sixty and sunny and bright. Look at that! It, 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 hey, nothing like climate change. Yeah. Uh, in he Boulder, is, Colorado. Yes, he is the founder of Boulder Hybrids in Boulder, Colorado. He is Mr. Paul Guzik. Hey, everybody, glad to be here. And my beer sponsor this week is uh. Guns and Rosé. <laughs> Guns um, and Rosé. So, never had this one. Uh, I'll let you know what I think. Uh, is it Rosé? It, it, well, it's got a little accent thing. It says Rosé Ale. Can you read that? Oh, it's bit? Ale. Okay, so it is It is a malt product. Yeah. This isn't like wine in a can, because that happens. No, no. Okay. It's, it's a beer brewery. It's a beer. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for wearing your name tag to the show today, Paul. <laughs> since, since neither one of us can get a lower third, at least you have. Yeah, Paul's got a lower third care. built in. Yeah, yeah, that's right. yeah, exactly. And a little advertising there. Good for right. you, dude. Wear my work shirt. Yeah. Way to go. BoulderHC.com is where you'll find Mr. Guzik. Uh, first up is a chance for me to be quiet, which, oh, you know what? I should actually acknowledge. Thank you. Um, we've been on hiatus for two weeks. Um, I had to take care of some personal business. It wasn't the fault of anyone, all mine. Uh, so thank you so much for uh, being patient with us and coming back uh, on the, in the middle of January. Wherever you are, we're glad you're back and we're glad to be back. So uh, first- So you were, you were out using that uh, New Year's resolution gym membership? Is that what you were doing? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I was right there, baby. Right there. here. In fact, yeah. yeah. Nothing, nothing <laughs> says, nothing says Texas. Like nothing fuck guys, beef jerky. <laughs> exactly. Nothing says Texas like buck ease, baby. So yeah, that is straight from Texas beef jerky. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually sporting a Bucky's t-shirt cause I love me some Bucky's. Yeah. I was in Texas helping some friends and uh you know, just driving through this wonderful country of ours. No sarcasm intended. Um, Mark and yes. Paul are going to talk about uh, the Detroit Auto Show, which um, is actually still in progress, but most of the news is already broken. So I'm going to I'm going to be quiet and let them talk. Well, take it I away, didn't Mark. Get to go, so I just have hearsay from what I've seen and heard. Well, that you and I are in the same boat, Paul. I didn't get to go either, but uh, certainly there's been news it's that have right been out the there. Road for you, Mark. Uh, I know, I know, but uh, I banged on the doors and they wouldn't let me in. Um, you need to. What can you do? <laughs> they, they, they got that wall between the U.S. and Canada. <laughs> They've already started the wall. Yes, <laughs> that shut down. They couldn't get through. <laughs> well, uh, what did happen, of course, is that uh, one of the stories is that the, Neath, the Nissan Leaf Plus has been unveiled uh, and is now going to become available. The larger Leaf with the larger battery uh, that they uh, indicate uh, that it's going to be sitting in around 226 miles, 
a little bit shorter than, uh, say, the Bolt or the Kona Electric. But, uh, again, a good amount over the forty current 40-kilowatt 40 battery. Uh, this new 60-kilowatt battery, or 62, depending on who you talk to, uh, is uh, going to be uh, available in the marketplace uh, shortly. Dun, so, dun, dun. so good to see that it was because there was there was it was supposed to happen apparently during the LA Auto Show back in December. Yes, and then they had that slight problem when uh, <laughs> Carlos uh, apparently was arrested at the airport, and uh, you know, uh, with all the papers about the release notes, I guess went with him to jail. So uh, there allegedly, was... <laughs> thank you. Uh, from our, our lawyer, yeah. but uh, it, uh, it's, it, it was put on pause for some time and uh, recently came out that, yes, the, uh, the 60 kilowatt uh, vehicle would be uh, starting to roll out uh, and available in North America mid-year. So, any, uh, any pricing out there? I didn't get any pricing, um, so I'm have. not sure if the actual amount has been announced at this point. Um, but, um, at least, uh, well, we, we look at the price of the 40 kilowatt and it was fairly, you know, it was in line with the 30 based on, you got an extra 10. So I got to believe that Nissan is going to follow because this battery pack is still apparently air cooled. There was, uh, is it, I thought they had active thermal management in this vehicle. It's not liquid cooled. It's not liquid cooled. Could be a fan. Could be a fan. Yeah. Wow. Really? So, so they That's stayed right. away from, during the unveil. They stayed away from talking about how the battery was cooled at all. So I really believe this is not. Wow. This is not a liquid cooled battery. It's kind of lame because the Leaf That's is such a great car, totally except lame. for the range. Yeah. But then, you know, and then there's that problem where the current 40 kilowatt has what they call a charge gate. Everything's gate now, you know, yeah, but yeah. Uh, it, it, if you do multiple fast charges in a row, the battery can uh, basically overheat and it slows down on the charging dramatically. Right. According to some owners. I, okay. <laughs> Allegedly. 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 I don't know. No, I'm, I'm not. And I'm not questioning what you're saying. I'm just, you know, like that. <laughs> just, uh, um, uh, you know, not, not everybody had problems with the old leaf battery when, when they were frying in the desert either. It was, you know, folks in the desert. So obviously uh, right. it was a heat issue. Uh, um, uh, and, and this, 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 this thermal management issue has dogged Nissan since the introduction of the leaf. And it I'm has. not really sure what they haven't learned yet. Um, it, it's very, it's, it's almost frustrating to me, you know, I, I don't know why. Well, it's, it's obviously cost and where they believe they should be in the marketplace. And obviously they believe that, that where they're sitting is a spot that they're comfortable in because they've had the chance to move from it or, you know, they had the chance to learn what they've done and they seem comfortable with it for some reason. Yeah. Um, the speculation is the, the new Leaf Plus is going to come in about 37000 uh and change at a base level. Um, but uh, again, Nissan's been cagey about it, so we're just guessing. Right, right. Not because we like it, because Nissan hasn't said what the price is. And remember, we were talking a couple weeks ago about uh, Chevy and what oh. they were going to be doing, and hopefully that they would be unveiling a new EV uh, at the uh, Detroit Auto Show. I was, I was hoping for sure. Um, they did unveil something, but it's just a drawing. Yeah. There is no actual car. It's just a rendering, a couple of render shots of this. Uh, SUV or crossover looking full size vehicle that uh, they claim will be uh, electric vehicle, complete electric vehicle. Um, but and again, it's interesting they're positioning it as a Cadillac. You know, they're trying to make it upscale. Making, they're you know. making upscale. Is that obviously to make profit? Uh, to yeah, or to compete with Tesla and Audi and. Yeah. The other big EV guys. There could be some multiple reasons. No information about 
details about when it would be sold. Um, it's well, this all... year, it's rendering next year will be styrofoam. Well, Ooh. well, that would be a plus if they if they moved up somewhat. Um, hopefully, they make it better than the Faraday Future model. But uh, I, I was I was disappointed. I was disappointed that they didn't have a real car. Um, maybe it's unrealistic to believe that they could have one ready because I, I don't know, but they've been talking about this 2022 or 2023 to have 20 models for a while now for over a year. And I was hoping they would have something to show at this show, especially with the news that they were closing down Hamtramck and Volt production. So, uh, that, that hope has been dashed for me. Um, I guess we'll, we'll see, uh, how this progresses. Oh. Aren't some of the Cadillacs they're selling in the U.S. now made in China? So maybe they're going to ramp up the Chinese factory. Well, that's that's even a possibility. You know, they could be making some of these. Uh, obviously, the Chinese market is something that GM is after, and they believe is a growing market for them. And certainly electrics uh, are really taking off in China, and uh, GM is following that. So... You know, it, it does stand to reason that they could be making it there as well. Um, but they're, again, very short on details about what's going on here. Uh, we're not really sure where it's going to lie, uh, but uh, they, they did show the, these renders at the, uh, at the show. And uh, for those who are wondering, <clears throat> the uh, Bolt itself, the Chevy Bolt EV, was on display uh, at... Uh, the North American International Auto Show, but the Chevy Volt was gone. <laughs> it was not on display at all, which, of course, if it stops production in March, uh, stands to reason. Sad. Sad day. Sad, sad day. Sad. Makes me sad. You know, I'm going to, I have a story slated for later, but we just talked about it. So I'm just going to toss a couple of random comments in here. Number one, GM's, the, the amount of hubris that GM can swim in sometimes is staggering to me. Okay. I mean, this is the company that, that, that they've done so many cool things with the Volt. Oh, wait, it's going away. Um, and the Bolt which is great and it's not going away but the idea that they've been talking since this rendering introduction that Cadillac's going to become quote lead electric vehicle brand um i have a i have a Cadillac t-shirt in one hand i have a Tesla t-shirt in the other which yeah. one do you want neither one <laughs> well and that's the thing i mean to a lot of people, Cadillac is grandpa car. Right. I mean, they're trying to get a, the younger people to look at it, but you know, aside from a few Escalades they sell to wrappers, I mean, who's buying Cadillacs? You know. And this, when you think of cool, fast, cool, like you know, hip electric cars, do you think Cadillac or you think Tesla? Right. So they got a big road ahead of them. I yeah, totally they're, they're agree. They're in an uphill climb for sure. I, I'm not sure why <laughs> they think. I, I mean, I, I guess it's pricing. I guess it's margin. But I'm not sure why they think Cadillac should be the leader here. I just, it just doesn't seem like the right name to stick on there. You know, I, I, I don't. Well, and 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 they'll probably come out with a Chevy labeled version of whatever EV. They they do say it, it will trickle down to Chevy and and lower priced vehicles, but. I don't know. It's it's. I guess they're going to try and play in Tesla's market to start um, with the higher price car. Oh, I just, they went the other way. They had the the Cadillac ELR, which was a Cadillac two door Volt, and it right. failed miserably. Well, look at the price, and you the know price why thing it failed. Was crazy. Yeah, it was like no seventy thousand dollars. Like yeah. it was insane. And I remember seeing a used one for sale, <clears throat> and we worked out this used price and the miles traveled and the depreciation was $26 a mile. <laughs> <laughs> That's how fast it depreciated. It's, yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, between so the, that, you know, that, that is a recent story of how Cadillac could not capture the market. It, it couldn't, it couldn't price it right. It didn't have the right product. It wasn't aiming at the right group maybe, yeah. but they failed miserably on that build. Yeah. I, I just don't see Cadillac as being the, oh my God, I've got to have it. You know, right. I, I, again, unless we're talking about my grandfather 
who's been dead for a decade or so, but <laughs> there are a few grandfathers alive that remember when Cadillac was cool, you know? And some, some of the Cadillacs look cool, like, but you're right that they haven't caught on yeah, the, like, the imagination like the, of, of the majority of buyers. There's the millennials and the middle-aged people who want a cool car are going to buy like an Audi e-tron or the Jaguar e-pace or a Tesla or a Tesla, mostly yeah. Tesla, but yeah. that's, and for Cadillac to play in that, in that league, it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be very tough. That's what Unless I, I they come out with something that kicks Tesla's ass in performance and cost and, you know, amenities, which I just can't see them doing. No, but I mean, it, they could happen. GM's a huge powerhouse. They're an enormous corporation, but Tesla has such a lead on them in that sense. And as many things as I like to take Tesla to task for, the idea that Cadillac's going to go from two failed or, well, basically two failed electric-ish cars uh, to this, to like, oh, a Tesla killer. Oh, get out of here. It's just crazy. Um, G GM has brought us some great cars. I mean, there is the sure. Pontiac Aztec. Um, <laughs> How oh, she had to take me there, didn't you? <sighs> okay, what's next? Sorry, Mark. Okay. I just wanted to touch on this concept. And I know we love concepts. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Please tell look, me it's a BMW. Look at this baby. This is the GAC concept <laughs> vehicle. Yes, it GAC. is GAC. <laughs> it is definitely GAC. Uh, is that how it's pronounced? G-A-C? I'm, I'm assuming. No idea. I don't even know. I don't. This Chinese automaker uh, was at the Detroit Auto Show now, I believe, a couple years in a row. And uh, I remember passing by their booth and seeing uh, regular ICE vehicles. But uh, this year, they've unveiled the seven-passenger SUV-style electric powertrain vehicle. And... If this does not remind me of Faraday Future, like exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what I saw uh -huh. when this image came up was was Faraday. They found the styrofoam blocks behind the <laughs> yeah. spray painted in a different color. Yeah, so um, it's uh, it's an interesting looking vehicle, see through doors and all. Um, <laughs> interesting is the word I would use, maybe hideous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again, uh, all we know is it's it's a concept. It's supposed to be electrically powered, but there's no other real details. This is just a concept and something to show at an auto show, really. But uh, those those are just a few examples of what has happened at the Detroit Auto Show. I'm not going to go through everything. Uh, there's you know obviously all the the regular contenders that are already out there. Uh, you know such as the Kia Soul or the uh, the um, the new um, uh, Kia. Uh, oh, um, the, the 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 version of the uh, the Nero. The Nero, yeah, the Nero was there. Uh, oh, really? yes. The new yeah. Soul, yeah, yep. Yeah. The Soul is the new Soul with a slightly larger battery pack as well. So it's it's jumped a little bit, which is great news for people that like the Soul. Uh, but uh, no Tesla uh, was at the show. Uh, which kind of stands to reason they've been avoiding Detroit now for a number of years, uh, mostly because of mostly likely because of Michigan's stance on being able to sell a Tesla in the state of Michigan, which they cannot. Um, but uh, and actually, uh, Elon Musk won an award at oh, the uh, auto show, and it was for the the most disruptive force in the automotive industry. And disruptive. Force. Unbelievable. He was not there to collect it. <laughs> he, he had other things to do. Uh, so the award was given to him and sent in the mail. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, again, uh, probably Michigan's not his favorite spot uh, to be. Oh, man. I got not. Paul, any uh, any highlights for you? Um, those are the main ones that I, I saw come across the wire. Yeah. Uh, so let me yeah. ask you both a question then, if I may. Is it just me or is this rather lackluster alt car year? Well, it's just January. I well, I, th I think it's I think it's a little bit of lackluster. Yeah. Uh, compared to other years. But I mean but but this could be, you know, Detroit is also gearing up to change their show uh, to go mid uh, season uh, during the summer. Uh, starting in 2020. So, 
And again, a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about on this show and other shows are cars that are supposed to be coming out in 2020, late 2019. So it, th this may be a TikTok type of year and uh, next year there may be more or should be more based on the reports we've seen. But uh, uh, you're right, Russell. I think it is a little bit light. It, I just, I mean, you know, we knew about the the Leaf Plus. You know, we we saw a drawing of a Cadillac, uh, something called a GAC, which I, I isn't that a childhood <laughs> moniker for vomit? <laughs> um, GAC, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I just, GAC. I thought that meant barf. Yeah. Um, yeah, just not a lot of like. Well, and like, there were other other cars. Sure. And certainly, you know, there was a number of like. Uh, you know, for example, it was uh, uh, Nissan unveiled a, an IMS concept, and right. and they had problems getting it out on the stage. I wasn't even going to talk about that, but uh, that that issue did happen. Uh, there was a, a couple of city cars that you know ridic ridiculously low mileage, uh, you know, IMEV type looking cars, um, and there was a there was a one from um, Infinity, another prototype completely unrealistic in fact it's it's so unrealistic uh, i'll just share it with you now it's like it's, the bmw next it's, it's, thing it's yeah. absolutely crazy uh it's just to be oh yeah it. that one yeah so single yeah, occupant you know you know you got you got room for the driver and that's it you know so again what? this is just a, just a car to show it a car show that's all what, this is what is the rest of that body supposed to do you know what I mean? Like, is it storage? Is look, it like, look, is this like a grocery getter? Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I have no idea. Besides to look cool and cost $180,000, I, mean, I have no you know, idea like what this a, car is. A Le Mans race car or something. Yeah. But, inspired from maybe Le Mans. Yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, you know, yeah, no one's going to buy that. Nope. But fatter. And they're yeah. never going to produce it either. So, yeah. again, it, that's just something to, to show. Wow. Wow. We should create a, a website like concept cars are stupid and just show all of these stupid cars i like that could we just have a show where we talk trash about concept cars because yeah, like they never come out right oh i love that idea paul okay i'm on it yeah. but not until the end of the show um next up i you know i it's interesting there was a thing on twitter uh, our friend of the show, Ed Niedermeyer, had said, you know, hey, talk about like great auto writers. And I thought about it and I thought about it and I thought about it. And I went, you know what? Most of the auto writers, I know they're nice people. They're good guys. They're great reporters or women. Uh, they, you know, they're, they're, they're good reporters, but like writers, you know what I mean? Like writing that you go, wow, that was great. That was entertaining. Not just inform you, but I mean, really good at writing doesn't happen that much you know it's a pretty basic sort of sort of genre of writing and maybe that's not fair so anyway when i saw this headline i just thought oh that's wonderful uh eric everts at uh green car reports in fact today uh published a story the headline of which was quote verity future funder writes its own sob story and that's s-a-a-b sob story like, like the car like the car one. come on that's hilarious <laughs> um and uh you know we basically try not to talk about faraday that much because sadly it's just it's a disintegrating meteorite slowly slowly perishing uh so you may have remembered from our previous reporting that uh, faraday's last grasp uh, last chance for life was a chinese company called evergrand health that had promised them a couple of billion dollars uh and faraday had gotten an initial 800 million dollars from evergrand which they promptly blew um <laughs> and evergrand was like no shit really no i mean really you spent 800 million already you want three, more money three concepts <laughs> yeah and this led to lawsuits and uh uh faraday's uh, sometimes uh, allegedly criminal uh, CEO kind of being involved and not being involved. Um, needless to say, uh, uh, Evergrande uh, has settled their differences with Faraday and not given them any more money, but they did 
they did buy a controlling interest in National Electric Vehicles Sweden, which is the Chinese company that um, bought the rights to the Saab name. And they are continuing to build Saab 93, electric Saab 93s in China. Uh, so this 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 one-time funder of Faraday Future is now funding Saab China, and they're hoping to make get these cars ready for sale in the U.S. Uh, Man, that's a back ways, back I, route way yeah. of getting into the market. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, if you got nine hundred thirty million dollars laying around, you go, what are we going to do with it? We could go get some beer. We could go have a pizza. You know, whatever. Well, let's buy this company, uh, and they did, and. Um, you know, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. I, I guess you know now uh, Nevs has a, a, a bunch of money, and um, it will be interesting to see if they can make a viable electric car uh, for sale here, and obviously in China, where there is an even bigger market. But to be clear, they're just leasing the Saab name to build something in China. Is that what's going on? Well, Saab doesn't exist anymore. Okay, but they, but they have some engineers in scandinavia right? correct yeah I, I thank you paul they do yeah they do maintain a presence in scandinavia they have engineering uh, uh engineers there and designers so it's and they're cold cold weather testing lab or something probably yeah it, it, i mean i i don't it may not be fair to say it's a shell of what it once was but it is obviously because they're not actively producing sobs anymore but there are some people there the name does does there's some continuity of staff. So, you know, uh, that's not a bad thing. Saab hmm. wasn't a horrible car. No, until the GM bought them. Yeah, well, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing to say. <laughs> I got nothing. Because already people at GM aren't going to return my calls. No. Um, next and up, the Oldsmobile division. Yeah, and the, <laughs> the Pontiac. Oh wait, that doesn't exist. Uh, I just, I love this picture. I love this picture. Does anybody know what that picture is? That is a picture inside Alex Roy's. Uh, um, I believe that's the his BMW M3 uh, that he drove on Cannonball Run, uh, successful oh. Cannonball Run trips. You'll notice all of the accoutrements which Alex. Uh, uh, puts his car uh, so uh alex is a friend of ed's who's uh, been on the show and and i converse back and forth with him interestingly enough um if you follow uh alex's stuff on the drive he has been a very very vocal critic of uh autonomous vehicles and very very in my opinion accurately vocal critic of autonomous vehicles and a lot of the hype that's blown up about them um just this week Alex Roy has accepted a job to work for Argo AI, one of <laughs> the leading autonomous vehicle creators, uh, working on the technology to make these vehicles uh, practical. Um, I, I, his reasoning uh, to me is, is, is very good in that he feels that Argo is one of the good companies that isn't just selling smoke and mirrors, that is, that is quietly producing, uh, working on producing viable technology, not selling hype, not not promising the world, just doing what they do and 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 working towards something that is semi-autonomous or autonomous. Uh, and, and I just wanted to wish him uh, congratulations and and best of luck at Argo. Uh, I was wondering if you're going to say he's going to take them to task. <laughs> I I think I think that's part of it. Um, I, I forget he had like a, kind of an interesting title, uh, but I I think part of it. Uh, is that they want him to keep them honest in a sense. You know what I mean? Like it's a good thing to have somebody who's critical right. of a lot of what you do in there because it, it can keep you grounded. And in a kind of weird way, gives you credibility. Well, there's that too. And it, it certainly doesn't hurt that, um, you know, one of the, one of the things he's repeatedly said he really wants to do is do the first cannonball run in an autonomous vehicle, right. you know, and he's got the cred there because he's done that a number of times, uh, in a number of different vehicles, uh, and still holds some records there. So, um, you know, uh, cheers to him. And, and I hope, uh, I hope he can make it, uh, Argo better, you know? And if not, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll to keep sending him a paycheck. 
Right. Yeah. Maybe they'll throw him out in two weeks after. It's like, come on, man. But and, and if you don't read uh, Alex's stuff at the drive, you should. He is actually one of the better writers out there. He's very, very funny, very intelligent, has a lot of interesting views. Um, speaking of autonomous vehicles, um, one of the things that I've noticed about, about 2019, about late 2018, 2019, isn't it funny how autonomous vehicles aren't really even a thing anymore? How quickly that. And it started with the Waymo CEO going, guess what? Not going to happen. And since then, we've seen a lot of other companies demure from their hype. Not all of them. Elon Musk. Uh, not all of them. Some of them are still talking about what they do, uh, 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 you know, which is they're going to have magic robot cars that will take you anywhere you want. Um, but it has been interesting to see a lot of companies scaling back that talk, scaling back their promises, um, which is good in a way, uh, as, as I've said, I think it's better to actually have something to show people rather than just say, this is what we're going to do. And we promise it's going to happen. Um, yeah. It's a lot more realistic to actually have produce something. Um, the whole point that like everybody's going to be in a robot car that's going to make money for them while they work by 2020. It's 2019. It's not going to happen. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. It's not going to happen, Mark. I'm sorry. Your Model Three is not going to be a taxi while you work all day. I, I don't. I've quit my job. What am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ah, uh, guess yeah. I gotta come up with plan B. Maybe there's an opening at a Tim Hortons nearby. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, I think Russell, there's... you're always filled with ideas. Let I know, tell. right? Good <laughs> ideas, too. <laughs> Good ideas. Right. And back to Buck E's, <laughs> <laughs> um, which is probably where I'll be working soon. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, you know, I, I linked to a number of stories uh, about this. And I just, so am I full of shit kids? No, you're not. It's, it's, it is, it is longer away than most people believed. And the hype machines that are in front of these companies are certainly being held to, to accountability now by shareholders. Hey, you, you said you're going to do this. You've publicly announced that these things are happening. And then guess what? Uh, that minivan hits that poor person on a bicycle. Oh. And things really started to slow down. I, nobody wants to be the second fatality company. No, no. But that said, there are companies out there right now testing autonomous vehicle technology. Right now. Arizona, California. Uh, um, they, they are out there. So that hasn't stopped completely, which I, I don't, I'm not asking for necessarily. But I do think it's a good idea to be realistic about it i'm sorry paul i did i did you want to jump in there you don't have to no i mean it's just going to take time i mean it's 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 going to happen but it's not going to happen as fast as people thought it would a year or two ago i mean and it's not That's just two thank you no 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 thanks for not making me stand alone on that i appreciate that uh, it's it's not just the the car technology too we have to talk about the infrastructure you know, and how fiendishly difficult this is for computers and sensors and LIDAR and whatnot to figure this stuff out. Um, part of it is also, if these things are going to work, every and every car company has said this, we need to update our infrastructure. Well, by that, they mean we need to spend billions and billions of dollars standardizing roads and, and making them more friendly to those sensors and that LIDAR. Or at least keeping common elements there. Right? Yeah. Right, right, well, but, but from real estate, save so much money on real estate instead of like expanding, like in LA, what's the I 10, like eight lanes each way? Instead of expanding it to 16 lanes, which they cannot do, they'll get way more throughput through those existing lanes. So, adding the technology is way cheaper than ripping up ground yeah. and buying houses and you know, widening the highways. So, now, we could argue that if you took two of those lanes out and you put train tracks in there. Yes, but how do you get people to ride the train? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, exactly. Five dollar a gallon gas. Yeah. yeah. 
Nope, they've tried that for decades. They cannot get people to ride the rails. I ride the train, but again, I'm a, I'm a weirdo. I know I'm an outlier. I get that. Yeah. It's just not it's just not something that the general population has bought into. Well, if they have frequent trains and uh, solve the last mile from each end, you know, from home to the station, from the station to your workplace, and maybe autonomous shuttles could help with that. Um, you know, maybe, so, yeah, but but then putting in the train infrastructure is not cheap. No, 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 it isn't. Yeah. Lots, <clears throat> lots of possibilities, but who will win? I got nothing. Big order. Um, <clears throat> speaking of winners, speaking of winners, uh, we've talked a lot about the Volkswagen diesel gate, um, FCA. Uh, that is the Fiat Chrysler company uh, that uh, just settled uh, with uh, the EPA on uh, their Ram pickup and Jeep Grand Cherokee Echo Diesel scam. And by <laughs> scam, I mean they scammed they owners. Cheated they cheated. <clears throat> they installed software and technology that fooled the emissions people and made them think they were getting cars that were so much cleaner than they were. Right. Interestingly enough, FCA got off really, really light. And by huh. really, really light, I mean there's no buyback for vehicles. Wow. If you bought one of these cars, one of these, well, trucks, Jeeps, SUVs, uh, if you bought one of these vehicles, uh, it's yours. Uh, what you could get is up to $3,000 as a, sorry, we lied to you. <laughs> um, and, and by the way, your car is worth $5,000 less if you try to resell it. Right. $3,000. Exactly. Yeah. We totally hosed you and here's three grand now. Leave us alone. Right. Um, needless to say, and there's, they're, they're, they are also required to repair the vehicles, which means basically take out the cheat software and leave them as large polluting trucks and SUVs. Rolling coal. Yay. Somehow that's a success for them. Why, why do you think that they got off so easy? Is it because they're not <clears throat> really financially sound and they could go bankrupt? Is, is it because they're not as big as what VW was? What What is the prevailing factor here, do you think? And we're just speculating. We have no idea. Uh, I was just going to say. Mostly North American vehicles were involved instead of foreign vehicles. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Paul's, I mean, it's the C in Fiat, in Fiat Chrysler. Uh, it's the Chrysler thing. I think American regulators had no problem slapping the living hell out of Volkswagen. Uh, but when it came to hurting American jobs, uh, I think they probably moved much more delicately, even though. <clears throat> um, because most of the diesel cars were North American produced, not right. produced in Italy from the Fiat division. Yeah, I, I think they had no problem, you know, just sort of like smacking the hell out of Volkswagen. Who deserved it? Right. Who very much deserved it? But uh, arguably, Chrysler deserved everything Volkswagen got. And Chrysler got off with. Uh, I mean, and 800 million, I think was the total 800 million. Yeah. <clears throat> but, but I think like Mark said, they, if they find them more, they'd be out of business. So. <clears throat> potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Potentially they, they, they could be out of business. I, I, I don't, you know, and I, I certainly wouldn't want to see them shut down. Although I did say that about Volkswagen, didn't I? <laughs> well, like, like what's, it's kind of related to our show, but <clears throat> PG&E in California is filing for yeah. bankruptcy because oh. of the fire, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. That's going to be very interesting to see what happens there. Yeah. It's not going to end well, probably, for Californians, sadly. Because um, I'd like to see the state buy that thing up and run it somehow. Maybe better. Um that said, so yeah, it's uh, uh, um, uh, kind of a, you know, 100,000 vehicles in the United States were affected. Uh, and uh, all those people got screwed. It's so 100,000 and up to 3,000 for each vehicle paid to the individuals. 
And yes. uh, 800, 800 million dollar fine. What was the fine? Eight hundred. Uh, well, they they're talking about the whole settlement costing up to eight hundred million. Okay. Um, and again, they're only uh, they're offering a software fix to the vehicles, and they're going to pay owners up to three grand. I don't know what the up to is. Up to means one guy gets three grand, and right? Everyone else gets a dollar ninety nine. Yeah. Um, there was something in here that said that they only expected eighty percent of the people to get a settlement uh, because to receive a settlement, you have to do, they have to take their vehicles back to the dealer uh, and have it updated. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and oh, by the way, you'll lose 30% of your horsepower. Um, and well, your MPGs will, you know, will go, go down. Around. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not that anybody who bought these. So, so here you do. Economy. Come on in. Yeah. Yeah. Come on in. And hey, you know, we're going to give you up to three grand, which might mean $20. And that coffee that you have during the wait, you got to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it kind of reminds me a while back when Honda hybrids had a lot of battery failures. They said, come on in for a software update. And the software update was for Honda's benefit, not the consumer. It right. basically um, made the battery perform less so the battery would last longer so they wouldn't have to replace it during the warranty period. But the consumer got crappier MPGs and crappier performance. And somehow they convinced people, oh, you better bring your car in for this update. You know? That's so um, not right. <laughs> so here's so a car right. you bought that was promised 48 MPG all of a sudden getting 43. But hey, your battery won't have to be replaced during the warranty period. Yeah, that's great. During the warranty period, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey. But three days after. That sounds real good for me as the consumer. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it's so cool being a car consumer in America. <laughs> Let's buy more cars. That train's looking better, isn't it, folks? <laughs> you don't have to repair the wheels on the train. You know what I mean? Loses a wheel, oh whatever. Um, that's all I got this week. Uh, anybody got a, any one more things on me? Do not. No, um, I had I, one more story. There was um. Go, Paul. The um. Ford Explorer Hybrid, they're talking about, um, which is a pretty big ass SUV, yeah. and I guess they're going after the Highlander market. Um, there's nothing official, but it does sound like it's going to get similar MPGs to the Highlander in the 26 to 28 MPG range, which for a seven seater SUV is pretty damn good, and uh, that could be exciting. Wow! So that's a 2020 thing. Yeah, but they're they're talking about it. And, Interesting. You know the um, Highlander Hybrid and the Rav Four Hybrid are still selling pretty well for Toyota and sure. hold their resale value like nothing else. I mean, the, it's you know I have people asking me to find them used Highlanders, used Highlander Hybrids, and you just can't find them at a good price because they're people love them. People want them. I, I, do you know? I, I I I haven't heard this, and I'm looking online here. Just if you heard, so Ford's developing their own hybrid system. Um, it wasn't clear, but in the past they've licensed from Toyota, like right? The they they hybrid licensed and the Fusion Hybrid, um, and the Escape Hybrid actually was a, a good car in the, in the day. A nice little car, yeah, yeah. absolutely, it was. Yeah, and um, they're nice still a little... good car. I mean, there's still a bunch of them on the road, and and surprisingly, they had a. Um, an air-cooled battery pack, but they used an air conditioning system, unlike Toyota. So Toyota used ambient air. The Escape Hybrid actually had air-conditioned air to cool the battery. And I think in the 12 years I've been fixing hybrids, I've seen one Escape Hybrid battery fail. Wow. So they're rock-solid reliable. It is all about battery management. Yep. Yep. All I heard people talking about was, where's the new Bronco? Where's the new Bronco? And I'm like, <laughs> I can't think of anything I care less about. And I love the old Bronco. You know? Well, I'm sure they'll make it look cool like the old retro style. I'm going to guess the hood's going to be about six feet in the air. Because <laughs> that is that just the style now? Is is like everything designed to like crush pedestrians? Is it just me? I see every one of these vehicles now, and it's like literally the hood is six feet up in the air, and it's just designed to like, I'm just going to kill everything in front of me. Well, actually, if you slammed in a pedestrian, they have the chance of living if they went through the axles and not the tires over them. <laughs> 
Yeah, like if they they fall over and you drive over them. Yeah, that's right. You miss them enough completely. clearance, you know they'll be fine. Yeah, the clearance yeah. is there. Yeah. Okay, so we just have to push for higher ground clearance. That's yeah, right. That's yeah. The solution. Okay, or cow catcher in front. Cow catcher, even yeah. better. <laughs> even better. Which I just like saying, cow catcher. Back back to the rails. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody they, perched they say on in the... Australia rhubarb. <laughs> to, to, oh, to bounce God. the kangaroos off the front of the car. I like that. Someone perched on the hood with a flintlock rifle, you know? <laughs> get away, get away. That's with the new Ford Bronco. I got nothing. Um I do have one thing. I have one thing. I wanna I wanna I'm gonna play a little uh I'm gonna play twenty four seconds of video. Who? Yeah. Uh yeah. Oh, 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 uh, yeah, that's what's in my driveway this week. Okay, what is it? That is the 2019 Lexus LC 500. And it is 12 miles per the gallon of pure fun. <laughs> so so and it, it's a highly efficient car. And it carries two people. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It is uh it, I've only put 6 miles on it so I can't really like give you anything other than well it looked really good in the grocery store parking lot. Um but uh yeah. You can refer back to our uh, la review last year of the 2018 LC500H hybrid version. This is the pure gas version. Um it is $102,345 worth of genital enlargement. <laughs> So you're basically saying it's 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 double this one. <laughs> oh. You know, I I got nothing. You know, uh, I, I, I want to say I was in the Toyota local Toyota dealer today on some parts business, and I saw the new Avalon. That's oh, it's gorgeous. Nice freaking car it's like a euro sport sedan it's not grandpa's avalon no and, uh, it was a uh, i was pretty impressed with it so uh, anybody uh, looking for a nice luxury ride um you don't need to go to lexus look at the total avalon yeah the avalon the new avalon is amazing yeah. um and we'll have a review of that very soon the avalon hybrid cool yeah and um, it gets like 40 mpg too right it, it, and it and it's great i mean you want to talk about like the best of both worlds, really great MPG, super fun to drive, totally super and, fun to and drive. And looks nice and well it is gorgeous. On the inside. Yeah, they really did it right. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I, it was a joy to drive. Uh, here's a picture, just in case you're curious. And if you're not, my apologies if you don't care. Here's, do I want it? Oh, there we go. I. I don't know how to work my computer. There we go. That's the LC 500. Big a kind sporty. of, you know, yeah. A sporty. <laughs> yeah, it has that sporty kind of thing. Uh, so that review will be coming probably in two or three weeks. Got to finish the Avalon hybrid and a few other vehicles first. But uh, Well, turn off the traction control and light them up for us. Okay. Uh <laughs> Of course, then you'll never get allowed to review Lexus again. Uh, uh, the watch registrar's attorney is advising me not to respond to that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, to your point, Paul, if we expect to get review vehicles in the future. Um, but I am taking a request if there's anything you'd like to know about it or you know what it does and how it does it. Drop us a note on... Apple uh, CarPlay compatible. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know. That would be a no. Yeah. I don't, you know, I honestly don't know. Like I said, I, I heard only... some of the new Toyotas are like, yeah, absolutely. Some of them are. Stuff. Yeah. Like they finally threw in tune into the junk uh, bed. Corolla Camry yeah. and Avalon. Yeah. Um, what standard, what standard least reason they would get to Lexus, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, again, I'm pretty sure that it is, but I'm not positive. Um, Cause that in tune thing sucks. 
Uh, well, and, and and in Lexus, it's in form, I believe, and it, <laughs> and it's much it's better too. Lot. Yeah, still sucks. <laughs> yeah, different name, same crap. Um, but yeah, it's fun to drive. Hey, uh, shout outs, Mister Guzik. Um, nothing special this week. Um, I guess I'll plug my business like I usually do. Uh, Boulder Hybrids, BoulderHC.com. In the Boulder, Denver area, we fix and repair hybrids and electric vehicles, and we sell used hybrids and electric vehicles. So if you're looking for a used greenish car, um, check us out. Greenish. We don't have our inventory on our website all the time, but um, call us if you're looking for something. We'll, we'll hook you up. They'll, yeah, hunt you, they'll hunt one down for you. Yeah. Absolutely. I bought, Can I bought. speaking of the Ford Escape, I bought four today at a county auction from the county of Boulder was retiring four of their older Ford Escape hybrids. Really? So, so they'll be for sale the next week or two. Wow. And, and you know, when it's a county fleet service department, they have their own technicians. They regularly service them. So they're taken care of pretty good. Wow. That'd be kind of a fun car to Cause that was a cool little car. Oh, they're, they're great. People yeah. Are. Yeah. The HSD system in them was nice. Yeah. I have friends that own that. Well, thank you. And again, boulderhc.com for all your hybrid and electric car needs. And now I have to see how much Paul's going to sell one of those for. <laughs> Mr. Coughlin. Uh, you can find us uh, at our at our Twitter feed, uh, WR EVA Group. And uh, please look us up and uh, follow what we're doing in our association here in Waterloo Region. I'd also like to thank the people in the chat room who have joined us uh, this evening. Shout out to uh, JT and to Phil, Hockey Day, Eric is normal. Uh, and uh, thanks very much, guys, for being there. And uh, if you have any interest uh, in being part of the conversation, join us next week in the chat room through our YouTube page. And if you're on the YouTube page, press that subscribe button. Help us out. Give us a number. We would really appreciate it. Uh, thanks very much for being there this week. Free jerky in the chat room. Yay! Oh, wait. I don't have any way of digital jerky. Virtual, virtual jerky. Virtual jerky in the chat room for all of you. If you were here, I would share this with you. Okay? I really would. And it's delicious, by the way. Um, <clears throat> as always, my thanks to Michael Mannering for our theme music. Visit him at manthing.com. Uh, as... Mr. Coughlin so wonderfully mentioned. Visit us at YouTube at youtube.com slash what drives us. Hit that subscribe button. Super, super important. You know, we only need to have a million subscribers <laughs> to get to the Detroit Auto Show. <laughs> One million. So we're, so we're at this rate, it'll take us a few years to get there. A couple of centuries. But you know what? Small oaks from uh, mighty oaks from little tiny acorns, right? What the heck? Uh, and we appreciate everybody who's already subscribed. And so tell your friend, ask a friend, share the link, subscribe. You can support us on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash what drives a show uh, for as little as a dollar a month. That's less than 25 cents per show, except for this month because I ripped you off. Only could do in two shows. Uh, Patreon.com slash what drives a show. Go there, subscribe, you know, kick in a buck or two uh, and help support the show. We could desperately use your money. We're at Twitter at what drives us and uh, Instagram at what drives a show. And you'll start to see some little pictures of the LC 500 while I have it show up there. Um, that's all I got. My thanks to Paul Guzik and Mark Coughlin for not making me do the show alone. You guys made the show real. I'm just. A dude with a Bucky shirt. <laughs> Don't uh, sell yourself short. That Bucky shirt goes a mile, man. That's, that's it, great. This is the back, man. No <laughs> sleep till Bucky's is the back. Yeah. <laughs> Paul's like, you're such a fool. <laughs> well, I'm, just, I'm just thinking to myself, hopefully they gave you like a few bags for free for doing all this promotion. <laughs> <laughs> I get nothing. No. Just like all the promotion we do, right? You, you know, like you think Toyota's like sending bags of money to the house? Yeah. No, no, that's all I got. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, and of course, thanks to all of you. Thanks to everybody in the chat room. Uh, tune in next week and find out what drives us. Oh, hit the button. Boom. See you next week. Thanks for watching. Dun, dun, dun. Okay.